Hello and welcome to Higher Ed Live, the live weekly web show about the world of higher education. I'm your host, Seth O'Dell, coming to you guys live, as always, from the Milliard uh, here at SNHU, Southern New Hampshire University, here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Thank you guys for joining me on a special day and time. It's Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Not a usual day, but uh, I'm actually in editing tomorrow for our new TV commercial, uh, and I'm going to be going through the night, so uh, not going to be able to do the show tomorrow, but still on topic, talking about today's subject matter, which is TV advertising in higher education. So we're going to be talking all about that today. Again, that's why I couldn't do it tomorrow, because I'm actually going to be doing exactly just that, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us on this special time. If you guys don't mind doing me a quick solid, just throw out the link, maybe hashtag if you can, let a few of your fans, followers, friends, anybody else know that we're doing this. I know it was kind of last minute that I was able to make this work, so I hope folks can join us live. But if not, as always, look at the archives. So uh, without further ado, let's thank the sponsors that help make Higher Ed Live possible. We are sponsored by Integral, the creators of the school's app on Facebook. It's a private Facebook community to boost enrollment and retention. Uh, check out how top schools are using Integral to meet enrollment goals and fight summer melt. I'm throwing a link out to that right now just in case you want to check it out. I do say uh, if you haven't in a while, guys, Integral still doing some pretty cool stuff and definitely worth a look. Uh, we are also sponsored by the fine folks over at Omni Update, the leading web content management system CMS provider for higher education. The company's web CMS, it's OU Campus, it's secure and scalable with great uh, deployment flexibility, great tools, features, and an awesome user community, which definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, if you guys have not seen it yet, uh, the 2012 E-Expectations of College-Bound Students is a really, really awesome and incredibly valuable study that uh, comes out each year from Noel Levitz and is sponsored in part by Omni Update. If you haven't checked that out, definitely do. Uh, thanks to Omni Update for making that possible. That's the kind of stuff that is just so valuable to our industry, and uh, we're happy not only for them to sponsor us, but also, well, to help put stuff like that out there, help us make smarter decisions. And we are uh, also sponsored by Scavenger. It's a Google funded mobile game about going places, doing challenges, and earning points. Check out how one university recently used Scavenger to introduce their students to campus and then introduce them to the city as a whole. It's kind of a cool idea that schools are not only looking at basically using a tool like Scavenger to get people comfortable on campus, but while they're looking to get them comfortable as a whole with the community. Uh, I think that's just a really cool idea. Uh, way to get students to have a better positive experience is to realize that, well, obviously the experience goes a little bit beyond campus, so let's embrace that and make sure they fit in with the community at large. And finally, we are sponsored by the fine folks at Converge Consulting. They're a measurable multi-channel marketing firm. They help their clients strategize, execute, and analyze their marketing efforts. Guys, if you haven't checked it out already, I've said it a couple times this week, but they have a really cool partnership going on with HubSpot that aims to help EDU get found, convert leads, and analyze marketing efforts. As we hear more and more about schools getting more and more competitive for students, it's about getting smarter with data. That that is the answer, and Converge has a really great partnership with HubSpot to help make that possible and fuel uh, the smarter decisions that are data-based making things happen. So without further ado, guys, again, I am here on a Wednesday night. We're going to be talking all about tonight television advertising in higher education. It's a subject that's been around, well, for decades, to be honest, and it's one that really isn't covered all that much. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. One is it's kind of the same institutions that are in the game. Um, the other one is that a lot of folks uh, in higher ed don't get to be very involved in that process. It's something that actually doesn't, isn't being creatively controlled or created and necessarily internally. A lot of folks are looking outside, and a lot of folks that are doing advertising, it's maybe a lot more on the local level, not national TV buys. Well, during today's episode, we're going to be talking about all of this. We're going to be talking about like local ad buys, national ad buys. We're going to be talking about direct response versus branding. I'm going to share a lot of different examples with you guys. We're actually going to watch a couple of quick 30 second spots right here on the show. We're going to kind of talk about what our thoughts are with those, analyze them a little bit. And well, you may have noticed by now, but I'm going to also be doing this show solo. So uh, bear with me if you can. You've seen me probably do it before. I talk a little bit fast. Well, today I'm a little bit tired. I uh, actually only got an hour of sleep in the past 30 hours. So I'm kind of running a little bit on empty, but I am pushing through for you guys. I uh, got in the office at 4 a.m., decided I'm going to stay right here all night, make sure we can get this show out. So we'll be talking all about this subject matter. And again, why do I want to talk about this right now? Well, the reason I want to talk about it right now is because I literally, literally on Saturday night, uh, just got back from shooting SNHU, Southern Hampshire University's new TV commercial. So they, we've been running national commercials since about, uh, I think it's about January now. So it's been about six months or so. We've been running sporadically in national. We've been, did local spots before that. Um, and the national spots have performed really well. So uh, one of the things I'm really, really happy to do is I got to um, art direct the new TV commercial that we put together. So basically I got to put together a concept, you know, got it approved by our clients, 
went out, got a production company, hit the road, and well, we got to do some pretty cool stuff. So the spot's not gonna be on air for another about two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks, because uh, we're still in editing right now, but it was really, really cool. So what I basically did is I spent the last 15 days on the road. We, uh, we actually took a crew of guys and we went and shot in Boston. We shot in uh, Woodstock, Vermont, up to Burlington, Vermont. We actually shot uh, in Lake Champlain, in Lake Champlain. We went down to St. Augustine, Florida. We shot there. We shot in Denver, Colorado, in Boulder, Colorado. We shot in San Antonio. Uh, we actually were the first production crew allowed to shoot at the Alamo in 40 years. In uh, 40 years, the Alamo has not approved production company shooting there. So folks had to shoot you know, across the street with a wide lens if they wanted to. We were the first uh, production crew that was allowed with permission directly from the folks running the Alamo to go there and shoot. Really, really cool. Uh, really cool experience. And then we also went and shot up in Napa Valley, shot in the Redwoods, and finally San Francisco, Bodega Bay area. So, um, it was a really crazy road trip. Actually, I, I totally forgot I could pull up a couple of photos. Here's one just, you know, looking at the Woodstock um, Bridge uh, here, covered bridge, shooting down here in St. Augustine, Florida. And then here's the really the, the shot that kind of made the trip was the first shots uh, at the Alamo in 40 years for a production company. So definitely really, really cool um, stuff. So it was a great, great experience. And it's been an, really an amazing learning experience for me being able to kind of just be right in the thick of it, getting to you know, work on concepts, write copy, get out there and shoot and put a TV spot together. And, you know, you never really want to kind of, you know, tag along and just follow what your industry is doing and look at your competitors. But I'm not going to lie. Uh, when we got into doing television advertising, I really started to look at, you know, what's going on in the market? What's happening in higher ed with TV advertising today? And I wasn't terribly impressed with a lot of what I saw, to be honest. Um, and I spent a lot of time learning, saying, you know, what are people doing? How does it work? Um, so I'm going to share what I've learned with you guys today. If you have any questions at all, as always, the hashtag is higher ed live. And again, we're going to share different uh, commercial spots that we like, we don't like. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to run through a couple things that I've been learning as I went along uh, about what it really means to advertise on television for higher education. So the first thing that I want to bring up is the, is the concept of national versus local TV buys. Uh, this is probably a pretty common thing for people to understand, but local TV buys are spots that only run in your local market. So again, it's advertising in your local market, um, but not nationwide. So there's a lot of times when you see uh, prime examples like you know your local uh, car dealership commercials or things like that. Uh, you know, a lot of folks can advertise locally. Why? Again, because if you're regionally based, clearly it's it's more realistic. That's where your audience is. It's also significantly more affordable. And the other option is advertising nationwide, which means you're literally making an ad buy that runs across the entire country. And you'd make that buy generally by network. Um, you could do buy blocks where you're actually running on several different shows at different times of day. So um, that's one of the big key differences first. So I'm just going to throw up right now just a prime example of a kind of a local spot. Tent, local spots not trying to knock them, but they tend to be a little bit more low budget, obviously. Uh, if you're going to be in a smaller market, there's just not as much of a need to invest as much. So local spots tend to be a little bit more for, you know, local colleges. A lot of times community colleges do them. You also see them a lot of times with trade schools. Um, so here's just a local spot as an example of the kind of thing that you see a lot of times in local markets for advertising in higher education. To stay competitive and advance my career, I know a college degree is essential. I need a quality education that works on my schedule and on my terms. So St. Joseph's online programs are perfect for me. I can work full-time and fit their quality online programs into my schedule. With courses that start every month, St. Joseph's Online lets me earn my degree while living my life. Guided by its core values, St. Joseph's College has been providing educational excellence for nearly 100 years. Where is your classroom? Okay, guys, so that is just an example from St. Joseph's uh, online doing a local spot that was running, uh, again, a little bit lower budget. I mean, I just could obviously could run national because it's something that's more pushing online. Um, but uh, one just example, go take a quick look. Uh, some of the things you see in more lower budget stuff is obviously lower. Okay, sorry about that. So basically, uh, when you see the spot, you see the lighting is really kind of rough. You also see there's contact information on the bottom of the spot. Um, and that takes us to the subject matter, which is that's really called a direct response advertisement. So direct response advertisements are, are literally where you want someone to, to make a direct action. This is the kind of thing where you see you know, infomercials a lot of times where they're actually putting things out with they're flashing the numbers and call right now for a deal. Um, that's what direct response does. And again, if you take a look at this, this is the same kind of thing that this spot is doing in a lot of ways with the contact information at the bottom of the entire spot. On top of that, when you take a look at this, at the end card is what we call it, which is the end of the commercial, which generally includes what we call you know, call to action, which is trying to get people to, to take that action for you. So a quick look at this particular spot's end card. 
So, you know, it's not bad. I, I got to say that the, the copy on the spot wasn't terrible. It was really, really, really heavy on value props, just kind of regurgitating what, all the reasons why you should pick that school. Uh, and again, it was really moving very direct response. So I want to talk a little bit more about, about DR because this is really kind of the bread and butter of, of people that are advertising right now in higher ed. You guys are probably familiar with ITT Tech, uh, a lot of schools like that. You know, I remember growing up, one of the first examples I remember of a DR spot in higher ed was the commercials where the woman's talking and they just scroll the degrees through. And, you know, we have nursing, we have accounting, we have psychology. And it goes on and on and on. It scrolls off. I don't know if you guys remember that spot, but I remember as a kid it was on all the time. Uh, and, you know, the goal of direct response is clearly to take an action. That action used to be to make a phone call, and it was, you know, call right now, and now it's a lot of times more pushing people online. Um, and uh, the reality is it works, and it's big business. So right now I'm going to sit back and play for you guys the number one highest performing spot pretty much in the history of higher education TV advertising, and it's direct response. And um, I have a feeling you guys have seen this before, but this is the highest performing spot out there. Uh, let me know if you've seen it before. I know you guys have. I know you have. I'm looking for an hourly wage. I went to high school, didn't do great. Still, I gotta make more cash. More education is what I'm looking at. When I get a degree, I will make a bigger salary. So now I've got to see which college is right for me. I took some free tests to find out my direction I'm taking my classes online Getting my degree on my own time Education Connection matched me with the right college for free Get connected for free Free with Education Connection Okay, I just had to stop it. It goes on. That was a 60-second spot, which you rarely see for most spots. Rarely, rarely, rarely. Um, but here you do. So Education Connection has some of the highest performing spots uh, in the history of higher ed TV advertising. And uh, again, it's, it's what we call DR, direct response. And it works. Uh, that a really, really annoying jingle. Um, well, people remember it and then they go to the website. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting. This is a DR spot that is, I think, a little bit more new age. These came out just the last few years where they're really pushing a URL only, not with a phone number, which, again, is, is a little bit non-traditional in that sense to sort of abandon the idea of a phone call altogether with DR spots. But again, Education Connection way over the top, um, but the reality is it works. And uh, you know, one thing people don't realize too is the thing about you know, who's behind Education Connection, just a, a quick side note if you're not familiar, uh, Education Connection is a lead generation site. So folks land on that site, they search for a school, when they find the school they essentially sign up and Education Connection gets your email address and then they, they sell your contact information with this phone number, email, uh, two different schools that essentially do what's called paper lead advertising, where they buy a, a big, essentially, you know, big bucket of leads, more or less, and then they start reaching out to you, whether it's through phone calls, call centers, email, uh, and it's a whole huge business in higher ed, actually. Uh, it, it's a really, really interesting business. So um, it's something that is working for them, uh, doing a lot of TV advertising. I can't say I'm really ha like it. I'm not really happy about it. I don't really love lead generation sites like that in general, and, and that that commercial is just awful. Um, but this is what I think a lot of us see all the time with, with television advertising. And the reason for them is because it works. It makes them money. It's a, it's, a, it's a wise investment. And that brings us to kind of the next subject matter um, when it comes to TV advertising and higher, which is branding spots. And this is when you see it's a spot that's not meant to necessarily generate leads or generate business, but it's just meant to brand the institution. Uh, and I'm going to be playing several examples of that in a minute. Uh, you see them from a lot of bigger schools. I know at UCLA when I was there we did that. Uh, lots of other large schools do at national advertisements. Just Essentially, they're just talking about the school building the brand. Um, you know, It's an interesting style in the sense that uh, it's incredibly expensive to get out in front of people and just take 30 seconds and try and talk about an institution. Uh, and it's not very focused um, you know, at all, really. Obviously, you're just talking to whoever's watching the, the show or the network that you're advertising on. Uh, but uh, some schools are doing it, and it's, it's big money. Most schools that are doing this are, are making buys you know, well into the seven figures uh, when they're doing branding spots. Uh, and uh, we're definitely going to show a couple examples of that in a second. One thing, uh, in fact, you know, I'll just pull one up right now. Let me get one up and just show you uh, one that I like a lot, and I will say it was done uh, at a time when I was just at UCLA. I was there for this spot, um, and I felt this was a very strong branding spot. So I want you guys to watch this spot from UCLA and... Um, and take a look, and we'll talk about this as a branding spot that did run nationwide for uh, UCLA. 
the different forms of new media that are coming about, Wikipedia, your YouTube, are transforming the way in which students and professors not only interact with each other, but interact with the outside world. We really haven't seen a transformation like this in about 500 years, and the last time was when the printing press was invented. The model of the university as an ivory tower is really an old model. The university has become much more porous, and I think the model of the university as a network is really the way to think about uh, how knowledge in the 21st century will function. So that spot was uh, part of the Here Now UCLA campaign. Can't say I really love the Here Now slogan, but um, you know, obviously not my call when I was there, which is totally fine. Uh, but th this spot was really interesting, and I want to talk about that for a second. So let's say DR spots, as we all know, is direct response, and the goal of that is to generate business, get people to make phone calls, generate what we call leads, and then you can see what the cost of that lead is and what the cost of that lead conversion is, what the student's overall value is to you, and make money off of that, essentially. Uh, and good DR spots make money for every dollar you put in. So you invest a dollar in TV, you maybe make a dollar fifty back. Uh, and once that ratio goes down, you essentially stop advertising on TV. That's kind of how DR works. Um, but for branding spots, it's a little bit different. Now, a lot of schools do branding really wrong, I think, in TV advertising, where they just put a spot out that just talks about the school. Uh, and it just says how great we are and how you know we have all these classes and all these things. And it's just to me, it's not really relevant to a lot of people watching. If you're thinking about this, you're sitting back and watching television, and this is not new media. This is not the kind of the new age of things that we talk about a lot of times on the show. This is old school interruption advertising. This is grabbing somebody, sort of shaking their shoulders while they're trying to live their life, watch some TV show. They don't really care about your institution, and you're trying to get right in there and get in their face. So what I love about this UCLA spot is this is about what is the goal of this spot? If it's a branding spot, we want people to think of UCLA as being relevant and, and kind of consider where it fits in their lives. Well, that spot didn't start talking out about UCLA. It started talking about the emergence of new media and how technology is changing. And it's kind of sharing this, this conversation, and it's demonstrating the knowledge that faculty have. That was a faculty member that was speaking in the video, and it's demonstrating the knowledge that this campus has. And then if you notice at the end of the spot, it talks about how not only is technology changing in communications, but so is the ivory tower of higher education. And essentially what this spot does in 30 seconds, which is a really good job of not only saying, here's how we're relevant to your life, because let's talk about technology and how it's impacting all of our lives. And then let's talk about how universities are changing to adapt to this too, and are being new and different and innovative. And at the end of the spot, uh, you kind of walk away feeling like, you know what, you know, UCLA is, is at the forefront of these kind of conversations that are relevant to me in my life. They're different. They're evolving. It's not the stuffy ivory tower that higher ed is often known for. Um, you actually walk away with a lot. I got to give a lot of credit to the folks that put this together. It was not put together internally. It was put together by an outside ad agency. It's just very clever. And I want you guys to watch it one more time and think about what's the goal that you walk away from from this 30 seconds. It's only 30 seconds, not a lot of time. Uh, but I actually think the spot leaves you with a fair amount to think about and a very positive emotional connection to the university. So one last time real quick. The different forms of new media that are coming about, Wikipedia, your YouTube, are transforming the way in which students and professors not only interact with each other, but interact with the outside world. We really haven't seen a transformation like this in about 500 years, and the last time was when the printing press was invented. The model of the university as an ivory tower is really an old model. The university has become much more porous, and I think the model of the university as a network is really the way to think about uh, how knowledge in the 21st century will function. So again, that was just one of many spots that UCLA put out. They put all sorts of different ones, again, so that way folks would see different ones at different times. But again, I think a very successful uh, attempt at branding the institution. And so again, what's the goal in a branding spot like that? It's not to necessarily generate leads or business, but it's simply to make people think about you, think differently, and kind of be relevant to people's lives. And the end goal is, yes, like any branding, that down the line that will impact purchase decisions, it will impact the decisions people have, finding your institution, connecting with you, but it's much more of a long game rather than a short game. But uh, the other thing is, you know, a lot of times with spots, it's about the um, the message, and sometimes that message is conveyed visually. It's really seeing that whole spot uh, for UCLA was all people standing in the studio, and that's not the first time UCLA did that. They kind of uh, did that often, often they would do that. They did uh, once called My Big UCLA Moment, where TV spots again, uh, where athletes would be standing and they'd be talking about their personal experiences uh, in the classroom. And that brings me to the next conversation, which is probably the other big area of TV advertising we see a lot of times in higher education, uh, which is advertising uh, associated with athletic events. And this was a lot of times for schools that do have their athletic events televised. So schools with you know larger sports programs, obviously you know D1 programs, 
they have the opportunities to connect advertisements to their TV spots. So a lot of times they have spots in the broadcast where they can su submit to have their own advertisements run. So in UCLA's case, again, we did my big UCLA moment, and the idea was that we would take sports stars like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he would share his favorite memory from UCLA. And what would happen is that favorite memory of his, it wasn't actually a sports memory. He would t in fact, in the spot that he did, he talks all about how his favorite memory is all about, uh, is all about the paper that he wrote uh, and being remembered for it. In fact, I'm going to see if I can search for it real quick and pull it up. I didn't have it planned pulled up, but I think it, it really highlights an interesting approach to athletic advertising. So let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, cool. It's actually right here. So sit back, enjoy this one. Here's a, an example of athletic-based brand advertising on television, which is pretty prevalent uh, in higher ed. I had one class uh, with uh, Mr. Lindstrom, who uh, had us writing a lot, and uh, he asked us to write a descriptive essay. He handed back everybody's uh, essays and said that he picked the three best essays to read in class. Two essays were read, and then the last one happened to be my essay. He, he, he thought it was the best one. And it was at that point uh, that I, I really got an idea that uh, maybe writing was something that I could do. So again, it's a really interesting example of athletic advertising. Uh, there's so much out there. A lot of it is sports team driven, uh, and a lot of it's also very staticky, campus driven. Um, but it's an example of a campaign that I think worked well. I, I had a very difficult time finding a lot of athletic campaigns that I liked. I did a ton of research before this show. Again, a ton of research before when we were working on our own spot here at SNU. And, and truthfully, just a lot of higher ed ads are, are, are pretty bland. Uh, and we're about to dive into them, but I want to talk a little bit more about one key thing. Um, if you guys have watched ITT Tech commercials, back to those DR spots we call it, direct response. Um, one of the things you see all the time is people in the spots that are students or alumni. You guys know, I mean, ITT Tech, all their commercials are people talking about their experience. And I'm going to pull one up right now to see if I can grab one here online. Prime example of what we call testimonial-based advertising. I was real proud when Chris joined, and the way he turned out and him serving his country the way he did. My name is Chris Torres, 28 years old. Before attending ITT Tech, I was in the United States Marine Corps. My family have been serving our country ever since, as long as I can remember. My best advice to people getting out of the military would be to get a, a degree. Most people feel it's just a piece of paper, but it's, it's more than that. It's the self-achievement inside of you to know that you can start something and complete it. He was now, what did that, just thing catch at the end, is that one of the key things, is uh, talking about achieving it. So testimonial advertising, as far as DR, generally speaking, is will always outperform statistically. Uh, people and audiences have repeatedly been shown to respond higher when watching a testimonial advertisement rather than just being told, essentially, by a VO, we call voiceover, an announcer, about a school. So think about that. So this is why you see these. The reason you see so many ITT tech commercials and schools similar doing testimonial-based advertising is because it works. It performs higher. And what I mean by performs higher is more people watch the spots and then actually call and go online. And the reason is because of what we just heard at the end of that spot, and that's because testimonial-based advertising sells outcomes. And that's a huge, huge pivotal point that gets people to push off the couch onto the phone online. And that's what you see repeatedly in higher ed advertisements. And uh, I will show you one more time, just the end part, this is what sells testimonial advertisements. It's, it's selling the, not only the dream, but the achievement of the dream. And this is a common theme in almost all testimonial advertisements in higher ed. Uh, take one more quick look. would be to get a, a degree. Most people feel it's just a piece of paper, but it's, it's more than that. It's the self-achievement inside of you to know that you can start something and complete it. So again, start something and complete it. Completion, selling the final goal is something that comes up all the time in testimonial advertising and it gets people to move. And again, the reason is because a lot of times, especially with trade schools, but also schools where people are going back, you know, going back, adult learners returning to school, it's not just about learning, but it's about finishing something they started. Uh, and this is why this is the biggest form of higher ed advertising in general. And I want to talk just one more t second, just briefly about DR, direct response, so people understand how it works. Um, you know, the long story short is you actually invest and you buy TV spots, large amounts of them, and then you have to do your best to measure, which we're going to be talking about in just a second, to figure out 
how much those TV buys are impacting your enrollment numbers. And what you try to calculate is how many leads am I generating off of television? And then out of that, how many of those students are enrolling? And out of that, how many of those students are actually staying and persisting? And out of that, what is the lifetime value of a student that persists? And then if you back into that, you can actually say, I am getting this many students and this much essentially income, you know, revenue coming in out of those students, and I'm putting this much into TV advertising. And then what happens is you have to essentially put out a, uh, we basically put calculations together and you figure out, am I making money doing this? So long story short, again, if you spend $100,000 buying a TV spot, but again, you know, realistically, if you're doing DR nationwide, you're spending seven figures, you're spending millions. If you spend a million dollars, am I getting a million and a half dollars worth of students coming through the door? Uh, and that's what's measured all the time. And that's why a lot of times you'll see like an ITT tech commercial come out and it'll sit in market for a while and be pushed really, really heavy. And the reason is, if you're putting a million dollars out and you're making $2 million, you end up putting $2 million back. You keep pushing that number. What happens is you have your investment in and your return. And as you invest more and more and more and you saturate the market, essentially those numbers come up and they meet. And the goal is if you can catch right when it meets, you get out of market and you pull the spot. And what you do by doing that is actually you can put the spot in, it performs, and as the performance drops, you essentially then leave market right when it hits the bottom. Uh, and it's a bit of a dance. And one of the reasons is because a lot of times, especially in continuing education, which again is the primary folks advertising DR right now is continuing at its for profits. It is not for profits. There's folks like SNU out there, but we're not really doing DR. Uh, but the folks that do DR, it's again trade schools and for profits primarily that do direct response. So what they do is they get into market and they invest heavily and then they measure. But the challenge is that their students a lot of times don't actually actually enroll for a significant period of time. So for instance, some programs uh, may take three, four, five, six months, or have a six month average that once someone inquires, it takes three or four months to close them. And so what happens if you're in market and you're spending a million dollars a month, for instance, in market, and you're saying, okay, well right now it looks like the enrollment numbers are good, you're actually projecting because the, the students, if you invested in January in television, you'll be getting students from that January buy in February, in March, in April, in June, July, and it'll trickle significantly but you are getting students, and those inquiries from January may not actually enroll until February. They may not actually enroll until March. And again, the challenge is, what happens when, when February 1st comes around? You said, well, I got a lot of leads, but I'm not actually sure how well they're going to enroll. What are they converting at? What's the conversion ratio? So there's a little bit, not even a little bit, a lot of risky dancing going on here. We have to really do your best calculations and project how much of those numbers going to change. And as those numbers change, can I basically figure out when to pull out a market. And if they're still staying strong, can I invest more money into it? So it's, it's a huge dance. And the question then comes down to a, a really big one, which I'm going to try and pull up, which is the big thing is, how do you measure success then of these kind of DR spots? And it's a huge, huge challenge. Uh, and it's, it's a, it's a you know, million dollar industry, lots of folks doing it, lots of institutions having data teams working on it. But this is kind of the back end of the DR spot. So for the, so for the DR spot, how do you measure it? Well, you know, there's a couple of things. You see all these spots. Again, let's take a look at ITT Tech real quick. You see that phone number at the bottom of the screen? Obviously, right off the bat, if you call that phone number, they're going to know you called that phone number for that spot. And the reason is because those phone numbers are not only unique to that TV commercial, but they're often unique to that network or perhaps that time of day. And you drop all sorts of different phone numbers in, and then you can eventually see when are people calling. And also, you see a lot of times to the end of spots, people do custom URLs as well. So instead of just doing itttech.edu, it might be like, you know, my ITT tech or you know, my.itttech.edu, different custom URLs you can track when people come in. And so if you can track phone numbers and URLs coming in, you can at least see some bit about what traffic is being driven by the spot. But the challenge is, and you guys probably know this already, is the fact that people simply don't do that. You know, if, if you saw this spot, you would just pick up the phone because why? It's 2012. Why you gotta pick up the phone? Nobody needs to do that anymore, right? And you know, if, the, if there's a custom URL, well, you, you probably just figure out, let's go to the regular URL. So it gets even trickier, and that's when you really have to start tracking organic traffic coming into your website. And it's difficult. And, and what, I mean, this is something that's new that we've had a whole team of people working really, really hard on figuring out how that works and basically kind of seeing where are the spikes that if we invest in TV, do we see spikes in organic traffic? And we, we, they, they have really been able to figure out a science to it and, and be able to figure out when it's working. Um, the other thing you can do, obviously, is you can also do basically surveys, is asking people what are they, you know, when are they seeing you? Um, but at the end of the day, the real challenge is there's, there's not an exact science in, in measuring the success of DR spots. So a lot of it's risky. A lot of times people stay in market too long. Spots tend to saturate between anywhere between, some people say six months. It's really more, I think, seven to nine months, but it depends on how much you're in market. But it, it, 
it's a guess. It's a guess a little bit. You know, it's an educated guess, but it's still a guess. And then for branding spots, how do you measure success? Well, in general, you really can't. You know, at UCLA, we did extensive surveys. And it was just, have you seen our TV spots? You know, what did you think? Where have you seen us? Where have you engaged with our brand? But you really, really have a difficult time. And that's one of the challenges with, with TV advertising and higher ed. And I think why you see the same institutions doing it and the same folks not is that it's a huge cost up front and very, very difficult to validate. Uh, so you really need to, to know what you're doing if you want to get into the space. And that's why it's a lot of folks are sort of hesitant or they stay in a local market because local TV buys are not that expensive, obviously. Uh, so you, you can do put a local spot together that's a little bit rough and, and put it on local television. And well, if you might not know what happens, but you figure it's part of your budget, so you just throw it together. And that's what we see. We see less and less schools making a big leap to national. Um, but some folks are doing it. And one of the interesting things that, that folks that are seeing results is some folks are doing a really good job. You know, that ITT tech spot, I, I, I always find this to be a bit forced. Um, but, you know, I have to say one of the best advertisers in higher ed, and it pains me to say this, because um, I still think it's a little bit boring and stale, and, of course, their competitors, University of Phoenix. Uh, they do some very strong spots. So, again, we talked about how if you really want to do DR right, it should be testimonial-based, because people just statist- excuse me, statistically respond better to, to testimonials. So let's take a look at a spot uh, from them that I think really embodies one of their newer campaigns, uh, not only for DR, but also for branding. As you guys know all too other, they were been embroiled in huge scandals with the feds over uh, really questionable practices. So they've, they've been pushing millions and millions out in the past 18 months, really trying to rebrand themselves, but at the same time, staying DR-based. So we're going to pull up a spot here that I think is really one of the stronger ones that they have. Uh, they have a whole campaign out like this. You've probably seen them before. You know what's exciting? Graduation. When I look up into my students' faces, I see pride. You know, I have done something worthwhile. When I earned my doctorate through University of Phoenix, that pride was on my face. I am Jocelyn Taylor. I'm committed to making a difference in people's lives, and I am a Phoenix. So why does that spot do a lot of things right? Well, first off, if you noticed, it sells outcome. Now, unlike the ITT tech ones where they're so obviously saying, I completed, it's all about getting the degree, this was all visual. So it's someone telling their story about how, you know, they're themselves going through not only a faculty member, but it's a student, uh, and the visuals of people graduating. So you're selling an emotional tie that someone seeing themselves succeed is a huge thing. Uh, the other thing is, again, it's testimonial-based, which performs very well, and it very much is emotional uh, and that's an interesting thing that we're seeing more and more with, with successful spots is they're based a little bit more on emotion and less on information. Uh, remember education connection? It's the same kind of thing. It makes people sing along. They like it. It feels good. Uh, they don't really think about the information it conveys, but, but they're still tied to it. Now, this spot's a lot glossier. And that brings up another point that I think is incredibly important, that when it comes to branding spots, and here's why I think this spot does a really good job, is because it's both branding and DR. The reality is... Uh, you have to be high end, and this is where you really step out from being one of the local spots, the ones that people laugh at that looks like a used car commercial. Is incredibly high end production value really is important, especially when you're making national buys. So just real quick, let's take a look at the beginning again and catch how heavy they sell outcome in this spot. You know what's exciting? Graduation. When I look up into so there you go. Two seconds in and they sold outcome, and then they're seeing a visual, and then they push with the testimonial. And then you notice at the end card, again, it's just generic. It's not pushing custom URLs. It's, it's very much feeling a lot cleaner, and I think you may be seeing more and more trends pushing towards that, which is really interesting, this blend of, of DR and branding kind of coming together. Um, so that's really interesting. So again, we have DR, we have branding, we have athletic spots. We have a lot of folks not getting into it. Um, and when I looked into this, you know, one of the things is, is we have really bad creative uh, for television advertising. I hate to say this, just so many spots are, are really, really tough uh, to enjoy. They're difficult, they look out of date, they look out of touch, and they just don't make sense. Um, but some do. So I want to watch a couple spots with you guys right now and then talk about a few of them. One of them that's been, in my eyes, pretty controversial. Um, and uh, But we'll start off with a different one first. I want to take a look at one from University of West Georgia. A wise man once said, Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. For me, that means going west. Find your own direction. The University of West Georgia. Go west. 
So they have uh, several versions of these spots out. Uh, I have to say this. I want to like it. I don't at all. I hate it. Um, it's really high value. You can tell they invested, but I'm not really sure what the spot's trying to convey. Go go west. That's it. Um, that doesn't tell me anything about your institution. doesn't give you any information about why. Uh, it doesn't really inspire me to go to your website necessarily, and, and I don't even know what the spot's about for the first half. And it's tough because, again, it's high quality, but, but really what the heck's going on? Um, and that, to me, has been a big trend in higher ed is advertisers that just don't make sense. Uh, and unfortunately, it happens a lot. And, and, and one of the trends we see is the first half of that spot had no verbiage, had no voiceover, no talking at all. It's had music. And that's something that's done in higher ed all the time, and I absolutely hate it. Um, I do not understand why so many spots in TV advertising have absolutely no voiceover at all. Now, I understand the desire to not be incredibly over-the-top and salesy, but the reality is, you know, voiceover can be a really complementary part of television advertising. And when it's not there, it's missing. Uh, at least I think so. And I'm going to play a version of a spot, and you can tell me, do you think it's missing? Because I think uh, this spot is just really, really branding, and it's missing something. And what it's missing to me is voiceover. Um, but let me know if you guys feel differently. So I'm not trying to hate on anybody at all, uh, but I'll be honest, what the heck was going on in that spot? Uh, it's basically doing a testimonial without actually letting you hear from the person. Uh, it's a random soft focus shot of basketball players and books, and there's really, really, really slow music. And there's text on screen essentially just telling me that some person I don't know, I'm not seeing, I'm not hearing from, was a great student, uh, athlete, and also now doing really cool things. Um, well, where is that person? Why can't I hear from them? I don't understand. Uh, and it's incredibly frustrating. And, and those spots, there's a lot of them out there. I just don't get it. Again, it's, I'm just not sure what's going on. It brings a couple things in there. And one of them is the music. Again, music is so important to television. If you guys have been following me at all on Twitter, you know I've been sending out a lot of tweets. I've been sending out emails telling people, help me get con connected with indie bands. We have a couple tracks selected already for the SNHU commercial that's coming out. But I'm, just, I'm still searching. I'm still wondering, is there something else out there? Um, music that's going to make me think and grab me. Because the reality is, uh, as you guys know, when folks are on television, watching television rather, they're not just watching television. They're sitting with their friends or their family. They're on their phones. They're on their laptop. They're in the kitchen getting a snack. They're doing anything besides watching a commercial. Uh, so guess what? The reality is if, if we're still doing old school TV advertising because it works, you do have to interrupt people. And you have to interrupt them by exciting them, not by having drab music that is just incredibly... Somber. I mean, again, just listen to this music for just two seconds. It's just, there's no way I would look up if for any real reason uh, from a TV. And again, one of the things too, with, with text only on screen, I'm not convinced you'll ever get the attention of someone for 30 seconds uh, visually. So what you're doing is you're now saying for this spot to succeed, people have to not only listen to this boring music, but they have to stare at the screen and read really slowly for 30 seconds or else they have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, good music and voiceover alleviates that because one more time, guys, look at how this is. It just To me, the flow is terrible. Really, really rough. Again, don't get it. Uh, uh, it's really, really tough for me. So what's a spot that kind of does something really interesting? Uh, well, here's a DR spot. It doesn't really feel DR at all, actually. Uh, and it's from Colorado Tech. It, it's a newer commercial. It's been out in the last year. They've been pushing heavy, heavy into the national market recently. And the reason is because the spot's making them money. Uh, so again, uh, you know, Miles got really quote, there's a lot of things missing when it comes to marketing. Sometimes money doesn't give meaning. You know, very, very true. But one of the cool things about TV advertising is it is it generates direct revenue that you can measure if you do it right with DR. Uh, so you can actually make money uh, doing this. It's very interesting. It doesn't always work. But here's a spot that has been working incredibly well for Colorado Tech. Uh, and it's very, very unique. You'll notice the 1984 vibe. It's very controversial. Uh, I'm really curious what you guys think about this spot because I have a lot of opinions on it. I could go back to school on the traditional route. Lots of people do. I mean, lots. But they aren't me. I want classes I control, not lectures I have to sit through. I'm not out to land some job. I want a career. I know I don't want that. I'm not afraid to go my own way. And it looks like I'm not alone. CTU, the new direction of online education. Are you in? 
So really curious to get something about that. When I first saw that on TV, I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, it seemed way too inside baseball to me. Uh, you know, do students that are going online really care that much about, uh, I don't want the traditional model, or is it more about the fact that the traditional model maybe just doesn't work with them and their lifestyle? Um, do they really have this sort of angst towards the traditional ivory tower? I, I tend not to think that's the case at all. Um, but at the same time, what this piece really did is it made me stop and think. I've brought this up with several people, and everyone who's seen it remembered it and recalled it. Uh, it's got a crazy 1984 vibe. I mean, absolute, you know, realistically, absolute ripoff when you see stuff like this. But, uh, you know, they're doing a spot that's grabbing people's attention. And that's really what I think TV advertising is about, is at least grabbing their attention and making them relevant. And again, they're making a ton of money off of this spot. Uh, they're doing, a, doing really, really good business with it. It's the reality of what's going on with them. So what's another spot I think that's actually pretty clever and done really, really well is there's an ad agency that's doing a lot of work for Westwood College uh, for profit. And uh, the spots have been really, really humorous. And it's using... Uh, Humor in their delivery, not outright laugh out loud stuff, but interesting humor to get people to stop and pay attention. So here's a spot from Westwood. I knew what I wanted to do after high school. I just wasn't sure how I wanted to do it. I knew I'd eventually go to college, but I also knew that a traditional college just wasn't for me. So meanwhile, I went from job to job to job. Sure, some of them were kind of fun, but none of them were what I really wanted to do. Then I saw a commercial for Westwood College, decided to give them a call. I started taking classes in my major from day one. The next thing I know, I'm even getting hands-on training. And since my instructors were also working professionals, Objection. I had the connections I needed to start my career as soon as I graduated. Start your career with a bachelor's degree from Westwood College. Graduate in just three years with the tools you'll need to succeed as a children's advocate, law enforcement officer, case manager, or in another great criminal justice career. Call now for a free career success kit and learn about the careers and salaries that could be yours. Okay, I had to cut out. The end of that was just DR heavy as hell. Um, but first part's pretty humorous. So great question came in on this. What does it say about your institution if you do television advertising? Uh, I think it comes back again to splitting into two things. One, is it a DR spot or is it branding? Um, if you're doing a brand spot and you're a major institution, if you're a Stanford, if you're a UCLA, if you're at NYU, um, you know, it just says, okay, I'm a big, huge school and I can afford it to do great advertising, right? So what, and, and that's just what schools are. I don't think it says much. I think, you know, when you see a school like UCLA doing national TV buys, it's just sort of like, well, they're UCLA or they're NYU, you know, or they're Harvard. Okay, they're going to do that. Um, and that's, again, it's just branding. It's just staying relevant in people's lives. Um, so the question, though, is really good when you look at what about when things turn a little bit more direct response. Um, I think DR ever, television advertising has a very, very dirty reputation, a very dirty reputation, actually. Um, people look at it, and they scoff at it. And you know, if they see you advertising on television, they think there's something wrong with it. And uh, I think there's something about that that's, that's understandable, but also not necessarily totally correct. And what I mean by that is... Um, I, you know, when SNSU was doing a lot of advertising, we've been in market for about six months now. We've actually had several folks recently that thought we were for profit and that were sending us some tweets about seeing our commercial and, and saying negative things about us. We had to say, you know, we're not we're not a for profit. We're actually a not for profit institution. They've been around for 80 years. We're accredited by the same folks that are accredited Harvard. You know, we're totally legit. Um, and the question is, well, why does DR advertising have a dirty vibe? And that's a dirty vibe because of your ITT techs. And it's a dirty vibe because of, of trade schools, for profits doing such heavy advertising and feeling very, feeling very inauthentic. Um, but the reality is, I think, if you are a not-for-profit and uh, you're doing TV advertising that is DR-based, what it says is, you know, at the end of the day, first off, it's your creative that delivers a concept, whether it's what it really says about you. But I'd like to think it says that you care. I mean, I think it's, you know, at, at SNHU, for instance, as a not-for-profit that does television advertising, you know, I deeply believe we have a product that, that makes a significant impact on people's lives. And I believe when people compare our product to that of others, uh, you know, they really realize most of the time that our product is strong. We have you know, far better classroom faculty to student ratios. We have far stronger advisor to student ratios. You know, we have very high completion rates, a huge commitment to students. So the reality is if we do advertising, you know, what it says about us, maybe people look at us and think, oh, why are you, you know, out in the same space as for profits? I'd like to think it says that we're out there because we want students to know we're an option for them. Uh, because it's the Wild West on TV when it comes to for-profit DR television. And 
that's not necessarily okay because folks that are watching TV that don't know what else is out there, you know, going back to school, especially if you're a first generation student, especially if you're returning as an adult learner, is incredibly, incredibly stressful and difficult. And, and how do you know the difference between national and regional accreditation? And that, that national sounds better, but regional is actually the way you need to go. And national is incredibly dangerous when it comes to transfers. You know, how do you know these things? How do you know what for profit and not for profit means, you know, as opposed to focusing on students versus focusing on, on shareholders? Um, you know, there's all these things that are, are really confusing to students. And I do think it's important. Uh, that I'd like to think it says if you're advertising that you want students to know you exist because you believe that you might be the right partner for them in their educational journey. Whether or not it says that, I don't think we're there yet. I think the times are hopefully changing. Uh, I really hope when you guys see our TV spot coming out in a couple weeks, you're going to feel that. I mean, we made a really, really big point of putting out a spot that's going to just be making a statement that, you know, we're here. We want students to have the chance to better their lives. And we believe they have an opportunity to do that with us. So I'm curious when you guys see that spot if you feel that way because I totally think that's a great question about what does it say when you're advertising, it says a whole lot, uh, and not all of it's always necessarily good. Uh, and uh, so the question comes in, so one thing I'm worried about is we're advertising because we need to advertise. Um, I think that's definitely true with branding spots. I know from being at larger institutions, a lot of them have this pressure where they feel like, uh, yeah, we should go out and do it. So I guess the question is, what are you doing with your spot? Are you... Uh, inspiring people or are you just you know blanketing them with information is the spot all about you or is it all about them I and mean, one of the things I hate about the University of Phoenix spots uh, that come out is it's I'm a Phoenix it's all about them it's all about I, I'm, I'm a member of the Phoenix well, well what about your students why, why isn't it about them why aren't they in the driver's seat when it's their own education so I think the main problem and this is what we're hitting on the head is that the challenge with television advertising and higher ed right now is, is, is shitty creative to be honest it's really, really bad spots. It's not that the medium doesn't work, because the medium works for DR, and I think it's a, it's a good branding platform at times. I mean, the reality is TV has numbers. You know, if your YouTube video got 2 million views, you'd think that was amazing, right? Well, you know, reruns of 60 Minutes on Friday nights get 2 million views. So if you advertise during 60 Minutes on a Friday night on a rerun, 2 million people see your television advertisement. Think about that. 2 million people. Now, if they saw your YouTube video, we'd all be running around the office high-fiving each other, right? So, you know, there's definitely a reach issue here with TV that it just works. It reaches a lot of people. Now, it doesn't reach people necessarily uh, at their own will, unlike, you know, online and YouTube where they're actually finding the content. But I still think that's an important point to bring up. And uh, it's definitely something that's really interesting to think about. So uh, I want to talk about a few more things going on, too, uh, in TV advertising. And, uh, and the first one, too, is... is Part of having it be part of a broader campaign. Uh, it's really, really rare, I think, uh, that I see so many times uh, folks doing TV advertising that doesn't really connect to an online campaign at all. And the reality is, I'm talking about with TV again, this is old school interruption advertising. It's getting in front of someone's face and trying to make them think of you for two seconds uh, and think positively. And yet, when they go online, if you have banner ads or if they go to your website at your homepage, what about that experience is connecting to the TV spot? Uh, and usually the answer is not much. It's very disconnected and it's very weird. Um, so definitely keep an eye out. By the way, definitely last one said they just saw a new spot come on their TV. You're going to see a lot more of them. You're going to see the new spot in just a few weeks. I'm super, super excited. It's been li literally sleepless nights getting this thing together. But one of the things you're also going to see with the new spot that's coming out is you're going to see the spot on television. You're going to see a campaign around it. You're going to see when you engage with our homepage, when you engage you know, browsing online, when you find different programs, the experience, that messaging, that story is going to be through the TV spot and through the website too. So I hope you see that because I think it's a really important aspect that's so often missed is really integrated campaigns where TV is just one major complementary prong, not the only standalone thing. Um, so, you know, again, the other thing that you see all the time with TV commercials with higher ed, and one of the reasons why it feels weird and dirty is that it's just nothing is really ever that unique. Um, folks are always just regurgitating uh, all different random facts. We have these programs, we have this, we have that. And, and um, it's a question that folks ask all the time. Uh, and it's what makes us unique. And uh, a lot of times people don't really have an answer or they have it wrong. Or we want to be the best school in our region and, and sometimes you aren't. And rather than spending the time becoming that best school, you'd rather spend the time figuring out how to spend money convincing people you're the best school. It's kind of a sad reality. I think of any business probably, but definitely in higher ed. Um, so that's the question, you know, with advertising when it comes to good creative is are you really displaying what makes you truly unique? Uh, that's something we talked a lot about at SNU, for instance. I mean, a lot, you know, was what do we do that our competitors don't, that our folks do? You know, we offer online education and on-campus education. Lots of folks do that. Does that make us special? You know, we're not for profit and we do that. Well, that, that limits the pool. And I think I've always thought not for profit makes a difference. I, I really do believe that it's important that your investments in the students, not in your stockholders, getting the dividends or making sure you're getting the returns on the shares that they're expecting. That said, 
that we're not the only ones. There's obviously bigger schools out there like Liberty. So what's what's next, sort of? And um, just as an example, so you guys understand that kind of exercise is really cool. We did the at SNHU was you know we kept saying what makes us truly unique, and uh, one of the things that makes us truly unique, just again, not complimenting us, but just trying to give an example, is um you know 80 years ago, uh, literally this we were founded uh, on the second floor above a fruit stand, and it was night classes for accounting students, and they could pay by class. So they could come every week and pay. They didn't have to give a deposit of any kind. The reason was, was we were a night school, we were above a fruit stand, and we had payment plans because we wanted students to have access to education. You know, we were not a land-grant institution. We do not have a history of, of sort of high-end elite education first. Um, you know, we started as a school that said, you know, come to us and we will work with you. Uh, we will find a way to make it work. If you need to do payment plans, do payment plans. We're not going to exclude you because you don't have the money up front. And we found ways to reduce barriers and increase access to educational opportunity. And that's what we've done ever since 80 years. So we were online in the 90s. You know, we have campuses in, in Greece, South Korea. We have five centers around New England area. You know, we have these things because we want to increase access. We're online because we want people to have access. So that's the kind of thing where that's a really good exercise for us to figure out, you know, okay, then what makes us unique in that sense? And now how can we convey that and what we're doing? Uh, again, part of a broader kind of marketing conversation. Um, but it brings up to then, you know, so if it comes down to what makes you truly unique, you know, brings up questions, who's really writing these TV spots? And what this a lot of people don't realize is for the most part, these TV spots are not at all being done by folks in higher ed. Uh, they're almost always, not always, but almost always being done by outside ad agencies. Uh, you know, 160 over 90 based out of Philadelphia, they've done a ton of spots. They're behind UCLA's recent efforts, but they've done a lot of spots for other television, you know, higher ed folks as well. A lot of advertising agencies are the ones that are doing the spots that we're seeing. Uh, and again, I, 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 nothing against ad agencies. I think they're great. You know, I work for an internal agency. It's new. Um, but it brings up a question of, you know, are they really discovering what makes you truly unique? Uh, because we're just not seeing a lot of internal agencies doing the work. And again, part of it, I think, could be said that there's not a lot of folks internally in higher ed that maybe have the have experience doing television advertising. But, you know, the more and more I think, if, if you're at an institution for a long time, I think you understand the culture. You understand what it's really all about. Uh, and I'd like to see more creative being done internally in higher ed by folks. Um, I feel totally blessed that I had a chance to to work on a concept and put it together and then and then go out and execute it and be a part of that and, and do that rather than shopping that to an outside agency and asking them to do it for us. Um, I'd like to think that that can catch on and happen more often. I think we'll see way better creative if uh, the folks in the trenches doing the work day in and day out have a chance to tell their own story rather than paying somebody else way too much to try and tell it for them when they don't know half as much as they do and cost twice as much as if they let them do it themselves. Um, so, you know, that's a really big thing. And the last thing, you know, the thing I want to talk about is, is um, we talk about like, you know, the investment and the return. It's understanding gross rating points, which is something I had to learn about. I did not really, I mean, I understood what GRP was because I worked in television news before, but I didn't really understand exactly how it worked. It's just basically taking the, the frequency, the number of times your campaign runs, uh, and multiplying it by the percentage of people that are reached. So, you know, if your spot airs five times, reaching 50% of the target audience each time, your GRP is 250. So that's just a really key thing to figure out, but that's also a science. I think that's one of the key things is, is not having that kind of industry knowledge that keeps the good creative and great television from being made internally because it's just a big learning hurdle. Um, and uh, I mean, it was there for me. I, I did not know enough about GRPs and understanding how they work and I'm still learning. Our data team knows a lot more about that than I do here, understanding you know how that works. Uh, what we basically do, for instance, is we buy on different networks. So we buy on different networks and run on different networks at different times, check the GRPs, see the performances we're getting. It's, it's a big, big kind of science. Um, and then it brings up the next question too, which is uh, who's handling the media buying? So once you get a TV spot, then you have to obviously put it on air. And so you have to buy the spot, you know, buy spots on air, buy them on different networks. And, uh, you know, just so you guys know, Media Associates is one that does, it's doing a ton of work for a lot of folks in higher ed. There's some others out there, but Media Associates is one of the biggest players. A lot of times if you go an ad agency, like a 160 over 90, they'll do the buy for you. Uh, and they'll actually do that. I mean, that's actually how, you know, PR ad agencies started. A lot of people don't realize that is they used to hand, you know, PR agencies started decades ago as ad agents, as ad buying companies. So they would buy essentially your media for you. We call it media buying, where you, I'm going to go buy space on these networks, and then they threw in the creative for free. Uh, that's actually how you know all our ad agencies that we have now in the country pretty much started in that fundamental idea that we'll buy the ad space for you on different networks, and then when you come to us to get it, we'll throw in the creative thinking for free. Well, the thinking got really, really good. It became big money business, and now you have ad agencies doing so much more. But still in higher ed, you know, decades later, a lot of times the folks that come up with your creative will also do your buying, although well, outsource it de separately. But I mean, understanding again how media buying works internally is a really, really important thing. It's something I've been trying desperately to learn, asking way too many questions, uh, as many as I can actually. Um, but the more you understand about that stuff, I think the more it's going to resonate. Um, and the other random thing too is understanding uh, 
different timing. So you have 15, 30, and 60 second spots. Uh, you'll see a lot of times the ITT techs are 60 second spots. The uh, education connection one, that's pretty much the only time you're ever gonna see it. 60 second spots are so expensive. They convert higher, because while you're in front of people more, you have a higher, uh, you just higher chance of getting their attention. Um, but it's incredibly expensive. You're really only going to see 60 second spots off a few folks. Again, ITT Tech, even Phoenix doesn't really do it. Uh, education Connection, 30s is pretty much where you see most of it. That's where you see your local spots as well. It's sitting at a 30 second range. And then you also have uh, 15s. And 15s are generally breakouts of 30s. And a lot of times the way that works is you get those thrown for free. So you buy in a bunch of space and networks have extra space left over or the media buying company has extra time left over and they split them up into, into 15s out of 30s and they give them to their clients. So you're told, hey, I have a 15 second spot for you. So a lot of times when you're putting creative together, it's important to think about not only doing your 30 second spot, but how is this going to work as a 15? So for instance, when you see this new spot coming out in a couple weeks, um, you're going to see really customized 15s and customized 30s uh, that we shot for 30s knowing we'd be cutting to 15. So it's been kind of something we thought about a lot. Um, and it's been interesting. So, you know, it kind of brings up this, this still general question of like, what is going on with TV advertising and higher ed? Uh, what are we doing? Uh, and the reality is not a lot has been changing. Uh, it's the same institutions advertising on television today that have been for the most part five years ago, 10 years ago even. Uh, when it comes to direct response, they're doing that because they make money. Uh, and they change out their spots because they saturate the market, they stop making money, and they put a new spot in and they make money again. Uh, and that's an interesting kind of concept. It, it definitely feels salesy, and I think there's a reason why DR spots have that vibe is because, you know, when you're flashing URLs on the screen, to me it just seems inauthentic. Why You're spending so much time trying to get someone's business and not enough trying to just talk to them about what, what the opportunity is and being real with them. Uh, and then you're, you're seeing still some institutions do branding, but it's, it's really kind of these same mid-tier schools. It's, it's generally not the top 20, but it's the folks in the rest of the top 100, a lot of us with athletics. And the spots are just generally not terribly creative. And we're just not seeing a lot of interesting things going on. Um, and it's a weird space. I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of schools getting into TV advertising that haven't been into TV advertising. It's just not happening. One of the reasons is because they probably just don't know if it's working or not. Uh, and that brings up a really great broader question, which is, is any of our marketing working? How do we know? How can we measure this? Um, as you said, branding spots for TV are incredibly hard to measure. Uh, a lot of it, I still think for branding, is going to be survey-based. It's going to be actually just surveying people. What do you think of our brand? How have you heard of us? Um, but we aren't seeing schools jump in because if they don't know how to do that yet, it's a risk they're not willing to take. And I think that comes down to a reality. I'm not saying this is even a bad thing, but folks in, in positions of authority in institutions, if you're not spending you know, $500,000 on some really brief national buys, what is going to make you suggest that you do that now? That's a huge amount to suggest, especially when you don't know if it's working or not. And that's why there's this huge gap between schools that don't have the knowledge to know if it's working or be able to, ability to measure it and those that do. And that's, again, why you continue to see the same schools staying on TV and the same schools staying off of it. Uh, and that's unfortunate, not only because I, I think some schools could strongly benefit from being on television, both for branding and DR, um, but also because we're not seeing better creative. We're just seeing the same schools do the same things. The reality is if ITT Tech can slap a bunch of URLs and some phone numbers on a screen and do the same thing over and over again and make money, they're going to do that. Uh, and it's kind of this weird medium. I mean, here we are. We're talking so much about moving online, but again, the numbers show people are still watching television. Television is still huge. Television is far more relevant than our social platforms as far as reach. And again, who are you reaching is the big question, right? And how are those people going to react? Because they're not necessarily opting in, but I can't stress enough. If you advertise on a Friday night during a repeat of 60 minutes, you'll reach 2 million people. If you put a video up on YouTube, you might get 2,000. Uh, you know, the average YouTube video in higher ed from the stats I've run gets less than 400 views. Um, so think about it. So all the work you put in that, you get less than 400, or you could reach 2 million. That's a huge platform, right? Huge platform. But then the question is, it's really expensive. Should I be there? And what the heck am I going to say once I am? And that brings me to kind of my conclusion for the night, uh, which is one that I definitely took away from the beginning of putting the concept together for Snooze New Spot all the way through, uh, was it's not as much about information as you think it is. It's about inspiration. It's about conveying emotion and making someone feel something, connecting with your brand emotionally. This is basically common sense branding here. Um, but whether it's DR or branding, it's about inspiring someone to do something, to take an action, and to feel something in themselves. That goes back to why are DR spots so leading towards outcome sales and, and showing graduation. It's not because graduation is amazing. It's because they're trying to inspire you and make you feel inside that you can do something. Uh, and that is the biggest takeaway I have for TV advertising that we're not seeing enough, especially from schools that are trying to get in that haven't been in it before. It's, it is about inspiration, not information. 
Uh, it's 30 seconds. You can only tell so much. Um, but it's still a weird Wild West spot. So again, I'll say, you know, I think we're in a unique spot here. It's new. I've been very lucky um, to be involved in TV advertising, but we're one of the few schools that's getting into TV and having a huge success with it. Uh, a lot of the schools aren't. And I'm just curious if folks are going to follow us or not. It's the kind of conversation I just don't hear a lot internally. At UCLA when I was there, it was the kind of thing that we just pushed a lot of this stuff out to uh, ad agencies. They handled all of it. And then we didn't really think for it. So it's this Wild West platform with a huge, huge, you know, sticker price, sticker shock, door charge just to get in. And it's a kind of a weird party once you're there. So I'm not doing the show to say your institution should be getting on TV or it shouldn't. Uh, it's just a really interesting spot that we're all in. You know, mostly from sort we have large schools doing uh, branding and only a few of them. We have a lot of for-profits doing, you know, heavy DR spots. And then we have community colleges and some other local schools doing, you know, local TV spots that are much more affordable and generally Unfortunately, very, very low quality. Um, so where do we go? I mean, the reality is, as much as we talk about social media and new media and online, uh, TV's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, viewership is still doing pretty darn well, and people are still watching a lot. You know, the average grown adult at the end of their lifespan is going to have spent 12 uninterrupted years watching television. 12 uninterrupted years watching television. Uh, so this medium's not going away. So I guess the question I'm leaving with tonight is not one that I have the answer to, but it's to say, should we be doing more with TV? You know, as an industry, does it work? It clearly works for lots of institutions. We clearly don't know if it works for others. Lots of schools that have a hard time measuring it. Should we be there? I mean, televisions are in nearly every home. It's a major part of people's lives. It's how they connect to a lot of other brands. You see all sorts of consumer-based brands on television all the time. And it leaves the question, should we be here? Uh, and whether we should or we shouldn't, it's very interesting to me, again, that it's the same folks invited to the party year after year doing TV and the same folks that choose not to come. And I'm wondering if either of them are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I don't know. It's an interesting medium, not going anywhere. The numbers show that. Huge reach potential um, and huge risk. So I feel like in a way we're all kind of sitting here in neutral as an industry, watching TV the same way we have t a decade ago, two decades ago really, not doing much more with it. Uh, and for all that we focus on online social media marketing, is there something we can do with something more traditional? Is it important for us not to forget that there are huge platforms still available with the same kind of potential to reach out and connect with lots and lots of people? And if you have a great product, if you have a great story, and you have the budget to do it, should you be using that platform to get out and get in front of people? Well, I don't have the answer to that. I know for our institution the answer is yes, and we're excited to do that. I cannot wait for you folks to see the spot coming out in just a couple weeks that we've been just tirelessly working on. I really hope it works. Uh, I've never knew so much work went into 30 seconds. I mean, no kidding. I can't even tell you how much work. Um, but uh, it's interesting. You know, again, it's, it's just an interesting experience for me to go through this. And I'm, I'm glad I got just to share a little bit with you guys and get some of your thoughts on doing TV. Uh, at the end of the day, is it work? Is it not? I don't know the answer, but uh, I think it's one that we can't ignore. It's a conversation we need to have. And I think that's kind of the last takeaway I have is we should be talking about this. Uh, your institution should be asking if we should be doing it or not. It's a huge, huge platform. So to not have the conversation seems to be a disservice, even though the answer may be, no, we're not going to be involved just yet, or maybe ever, or maybe we are. So with that, guys, this has been TV advertising in higher ed. I know it's a bit of a crazy all over show, but I appreciate you joining me. I just want to take you guys a little bit on the journey that I've been through trying to figure out what we're going to do, learning all about TV advertising and how it works. And um, yeah, thank you guys for joining. We're going to be back next week with more shows. I promise I was off two weeks traveling. I know it uh, won't happen again, I promise you. And uh, without further ado, I have to go home and write a paper for my uh, MBA class, and then I need to get some, some rest because uh, I am definitely pretty tired because uh, I am back in the morning down to Boston to edit our TV commercial, which you guys will see real soon. So thank you guys again for joining me. I am Seth O'Dell, as always, coming to you from Southern New Hampshire University at the Mill Yard, downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, at Mill Yard Creative, our internal agency's headquarters. So thank you guys for joining me. If you have show topics, suggestions, ideas, anything else, let me know. As always, I am here for you. and want to put out the best content that's valuable to you that I possibly can. I hope you guys have a great night, and I will talk to you all real soon.